Hello students of class 8. Welcome to part 2 of your unit 1 in the English textbook Honeydew. The lesson, the best Christmas present in the world. In part 2 today, we will deal with the section working with language, the speaking activities and also read the poem the ant and the cricket. Now do you remember the touching story the best Christmas present in the world? Do you remember our author who bought that old roll top desk and found an old letter in it? Do you remember Mrs. Macpherson and the letter that she received from her husband from the battlefield? The Christmas celebrations and the friendly football match in the battlefield? Okay, now let us go to working with language section. Look at these sentences from the story. I spotted it in a junk shop in Bridport. The man said it was made in the early 19th century. This one was in bad condition. Look at some of those words which are in italics. Look at them. They are verbs in the past tense. What is the past tense? Verbs that tell us about actions that happened before in the past. Now, which are these words? Look at them once again. Spotted, said, was. Yes, all these verbs are in the past tense. Look at the next section. Question 1. Read the passage below and underline the verbs in the past tense. I'll read the passage for you. Look at it carefully. A man got onto the train and sat down. The compartment was empty except for one lady. She took her gloves off. A few hours later, the police arrested the man. They held him for 24 hours and then freed him. Can you try that? Yes. The verbs got, sat, was, took, arrested, held and freed are in the past tense. Good. Now look at these sentences. The veneer had lifted almost everywhere. Both fire and water had taken their toll on this desk. Notice the verb forms had lifted, had taken. Do you see something different? Okay, look at one more sentence. Fire and water had damaged the desk before the author found it and bought it. Now look at this sentence very carefully. There are three verbs. Had damaged, found, bought. Now all these actions that are suggested by this sentence has happened in the past. What happened just some time back? The author found the desk and bought it. Now what happened before that? The fire and the water damaged the desk before the author found it and bought it. Isn't it? Right. You have two actions in the past. One that happened just some time back. The author finding and buying the desk. There is another action that happened much 
earlier the desk being damaged by fire and water so you have a past and an earlier past to represent the past we use the past tense bought found sat met and so on to suggest the earlier past we use the other form with the word had had damaged had lifted had found and so on okay now you know that let us go to the next section there is a set of two sentences given to you can you find the difference between the two when i reached the station the train left when i reached the station the train had left do you know what the difference is yes in the first sentence you're reaching the station and the train leaving almost happened simultaneously but in the second sentence when you reached the station the train had left before that right so that is the difference between the two sentences okay let's move on to the next question number 2 you have a fill in the blanks exercise there are some verbs given to you in brackets you have to use the right form of the verb and fill in the blanks let's try the first one my little sister is very naughty when she you have to use the verb come so when she back from school yesterday so which is the correct form past yes when she came back from school yesterday she had the verb there is tear her dress so what is the form she had torn her dress right we blank the verb is ask her how it had blank verb is happen so what's the form yes we asked her how it had happened correct the next sentence she blank the verb is say she two blanks and in the bracket you have have and quarrel with a boy so what would the answer be she said she had quarreled with a boy right she again have and beat other words him in a race and he have try to push her so what are the correct answers she had beaten him in a race and he had tried to push her next sentence she blank have tell the teacher and so he blank have and chase are the options her and she have fall options down and have tear her dress look at it once more and let us answer this she had told right the teacher so he had chased her and she had fallen down and had torn her dress do you notice how all those actions that happened in the school in the earlier past we have used the verb forms had and the verb okay let's go to the next section question 3 underline the verbs and arrange them in two columns past and earlier past i'm sure that will be easy now question a my friend set out to see the caves in the next town but i stayed at home because i had seen them already so which is the verb in the past stayed which is the verb 
in the earlier past yes i had seen had seen correct put them in the right box question b when they arrived at the station their train had left they came back home but by the time i had gone out to see a movie so which is the past verb correct arrived is there any other one yes came what about the earlier past verbs right had left had gone question c so they sat outside and ate the lunch i had packed for them verbs in the past sat and ate right you are earlier past had packed correct by the time i returned they had fallen asleep past returned right earlier past had fallen good you have done that well let us go to the next section the next activity on page 18 is dictionary work look at the sentence given there in that activity by the end of the journey we had run out of drinking water do you know what this word run out mean yeah you know that it means there was no water left now is this word a very different kind of a word run out when we say it together yes it is called a phrasal verb what does it mean there is a verb run and a preposition is added with it out but the phrase run out means very different from the individual components run and out we have many such phrasal verbs in this story the best christmas present in the world here are a few that are given to you look at them burn out light up look on run out keep out can you locate them in the story we'll do the first one burn out yes we have it on page 14 look at that sentence house number 12 turned out to be nothing but a burnt out shell right now what does burn out mean it means something that is destroyed by fire okay can you look at the other phrasal verbs in the story yes do it later try and guess the meanings of these phrasal verbs After you do that look at the dictionary and see if your meaning matches with the dictionary meaning of these phrasal verbs can you try that later good now look at question 3 here is a sentence for you from the text look at this sentence i took out a small black tin box small black tin box is in italics for you now this phrase is called a noun phrase can you identify a noun in this phrase yes box is the noun which is also called the head word the main word what are the other three words small black tin they are the words that describe the box small black and tin are adjectives okay so you have these three adjectives and a noun to make a noun phrase now these adjectives small black tin they are also sometimes called modifiers see the way they are placed in the sentence small 
is an adjective that suggests size, black an adjective that suggests color and tin an adjective that suggests the material with which something is made. So, they are normally put in this kind of a order and they are also called modifiers that which modifies, qualifies, tells you something more about a noun. Now, on page 19, you have a chart. Look at that. In the chart, you will find there are determiners. What are determiners? They are mostly articles, a and the and so on. And then you have different modifiers, four different kinds of modifiers and a few head words. Modifier 1, nice, lazy or beautiful. Modifier 2, suggesting size, shape, age and so on, tall, round, old, young. Modifier 3, suggesting color, red, white, light, dark and modifier 4, silk, cotton, wool and so on and the head words woman, man, table and chair. Now, taking a determiner and one modifier from each of these categories and a head word, can you make a noun phrase? Let us try. Okay, we can have a noun phrase as a nice young dark man. Okay, try the rest later as homework. Let us go to question 4. There is another table there with a few nouns and a lot of adjectives. You have to pick out a noun, add the suitable adjectives from the table and form a noun phrase. Can we try that? Yes. Let us try the first one. Elephant. What are the adjectives that you can use for an elephant? Yeah, maybe a cheerful, wild and large. So, you can have a cheerful, wild, large elephant. Can we have that or is it funny? Okay, the next one. Can you think of a face and the adjectives that describe a face? Yes, of course. You can have a round cheerful, chubby, red face. Okay, try the rest at home. Let us now go to the speaking section. You have one or two questions there. I want you to speak to your friends about these questions, these topics. Question number one. Are wars a good way of resolving conflicts? What do you think? We have read the story, you watched a few movie clippings, I am sure you have read so much about wars. What is your opinion? I am sure nobody wants wars. And there are maybe other ways of resolving conflicts. Talk to your friends about these and discuss this topic. The next question given there, which again you can talk to your friends about is, what kinds of presents do you like and why? What are the things you keep in mind when you buy presents for others? Do you like getting gifts and presents? What do you like others to give you? And what do you do when you have to give others gifts and presents? Talk to your friends about these and you can write the, your ideas down later. Okay, we have come now to the last part of this lesson. I have a poem for you, the poem, the ant and the cricket. I will read the poem for you. Look at it. The ant and the cricket, a poem adapted from Aesop's fables. Do you know what a fable is? Yes, a fable is a story where the characters are mainly animals and the story has a moral. Let us see 
how this poem is a fable. A silly young cricket accustomed to sing through the warm sunny months of gay summer and spring began to complain when he found that at home his cupboard was empty and winter was come. Not a crumb to be found on the snow covered ground, not a flower could he see, not a leaf on a tree. Oh, what will become, says the cricket, of me. At last, by starvation and famine made bold, all dripping with wet and all trembling with cold. Away he set off to a miserly ant to see if to keep him alive he would grant him shelter from rain and a mouth full of grain. He wished only to borrow. He'd repay it tomorrow. If not, he must die of starvation and sorrow. Says the ant to the cricket, I'm your servant and friend, but we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. But tell me, dear cricket, did you lay nothing by when the weather was warm? Quoth the cricket, not I. My heart was so light that I sang day and night, for all nature looked gay. You sang, sir, you say? Go then, says the ant, and dance the winter away. Thus ending, he hastily lifted the wicket, and out of the door turned the poor little cricket. Folks call this a fable. I'll warrant it true. Some crickets have four legs, and some have two. It's a simple poem. Do you like the poem? Yes. Now, why do you think the poem is a fable? Is the poet talking only about crickets and ants? Or is he talking about human beings also? Look at these two last lines. Folks call this a fable. I'll warrant it true. Some crickets have four legs. Some have two. Yes. The two-legged crickets are, of course, human beings. Haven't you seen people who while away their time the whole year round and just before exams, they frantically look out for texts, notes and help from friends? Yes, the story is about everyone who do not make the best use of time and think of the future. Now let us go to the section working with the poem. There are a few questions, we'll try to answer them. Question number one. The cricket says, oh, what will become of me? When does he say it and why? Yeah, we know this. The cricket said this when he found that he had not a grain of food in his cupboard and winter had already come. The whole world was filled with snow, there was not a leaf nor a flower and he panicked and said these words. True. Question number two, number one. Find in the poem the lines that mean the same as neither a borrower nor a lender be. Now this line neither a borrower nor a lender be is taken from one of Shakespeare's most famous plays, Hamlet. In the play, there is this old man Polonius who gives advice to his son Laetus, who is going to study in a different country. And the father says these words. Similar to these words, there is a line in the poem. Can you locate that? Yes. There is this line. But we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. What is your opinion of the ants' principles? What do you think? Is the ants' principle a good one? Yes. I think 
it is a good principle to work hard and be self-sufficient. I'm sure it is good to make the best use of time and resources and be prepared for the future. What do you think? Think about it. Okay, let's go to the next question. Question 3. The ant tells the cricket to dance the winter away. Do you think the word dance is appropriate here? If so, why? The word dance suggests making merry that which the cricket did when the ants were working very hard to store food for the winter. Now when the ant tells him to go dance away the future, he means anyway you are careless. So go on with your careless nature and save yourself. I think it's the right word to use there. Okay, let's go to the next question. Question number four. Which lines in the poem expresses the poet's comment? Read them aloud. Yes. You have the last line of the poem. Folks call this a fable. I'll warrant it true. Right. That is the poet's comment directly given to us in the poem. Right. We have completed reading the poem and answering the questions. Now, I want you to think if you know a fable in your own language. Can you think of some fables that your grandmother would have told you? Think of them. I want you to do a little more or work with those fables that you know. Write down the fable in a form of a short play that you can enact with your friends when you meet them next. Can you try and do that at home? Yes. Okay, with this we come to the end of Unit 1, Part 2. Let us just look at all that we learned today. We learned verb forms of the past and earlier past. We learned phrasal verbs, noun phrases. We did a little bit of speaking activity and we discussed about how terrible wars are. Later, we read this poem, The Ant and the Cricket, which is a fable. That's all for today. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.